Uh, Don, for the record, uh, please state your name and your current address. Donald W. Parsons, 746 Verde Drive, V-E-R-D-I, Sunnyvale, California, 94087. Uh, Don, in what year did you join the U.S. Navy? Uh, was June 1943. Uh, did you enlist or were you drafted? No, I was drafted. Uh, graduated from high school on Saturday and I was in the Navy on Monday. Uh, regular Navy or Navy Reserve? Uh, reserve, yeah. was drafted. Yeah. How, how long did you serve? Uh, a little over three years. How old were you when you enlisted or was drafted? When I went in, I was 18. And where were you living when you enlisted? Uh, Portland, Maine. Did you have any prior experiences at sea? No. What family did you leave when you left home for the U.S. Navy? Uh, well, it was my father and mother and sister and a brother and an older brother, two uh, twin older brothers. One was in the Marine, one was already in the uh, Army. What were your feelings about leaving? Uh, homesick, uh, scared. Never been away from home before, alone. Prior to enlisting, what did you do in civilian life? Uh, high school. Were you a Boy Scout? Yeah. Did uh, any aspect of scouting help prepare you for uh, your Navy experiences? Uh, no, I don't think so, but uh, living on, in Portland, you know, which is a harbor, I've always had an interest in ships, and the main reason was that uh, my father's a dentist, and I wanted to become a dentist. I was taking pre-med in high school, and uh, so I volunteered to be a pharmacist mate, and that's why I wanted the Navy, because I wanted to be a pharmacist mate. Good medical experience, I could. When you joined, what were your first experiences? Uh, first experience would be boot camp, which was really <laughs> completely different, <laughs> kind of rough. But what, uh, what were your impressions of boot camp? Uh, it wasn't as bad as I thought it would be because they, the, a lot of the kids that were in the Navy with me were my classmates, you know, probably half a dozen of them. So, and it was all a bunch of other kids, and they knew that we were new, and they took it easy on us. So it wasn't as bad as it could have been. Not the pressure to get off these Marine sergeants and all that. Yeah. Where did you go in, uh, for boot camp? Uh, Newport, Rhode Island. After boot camp, uh, did you receive more training, or did you? Yes, I, that's when I went down to um, Portsmouth, Virginia, and I went to core school. And I was there for eight weeks. After core school, where did you head to? I went into the hospital at Portsmouth. I worked on the contagious ward, taking care of TB and uh, meningitis and patients like that. Uh, what uh, destroyer escorts or uh, destroyer mine layers uh, did you serve on? Uh, well, I was on the uh, USS Upshore. I think it was AG-103. That was an old four-stacker from World War I. And what I did is I decommissioned that, helped them decommission it. Then I went to, um, on board the Shea, USS Shea, DM-30. And we were heading back for um, China, South China Sea, when the war ended. What was your uh, first experience on a destroyer? Well, first would be on the Shea, I um, mean the Upshore. The Upshore, right? Yeah, because that, but uh, that didn't really do go anywhere because we were decommissioning it. Okay. The first one on the Shea was we were heading down and. Uh, we come out of Norfolk, yeah, out of Norfolk, and we went around the uh, Cape Hatteras, and I think it was a hurricane. And it you was got rough. a hurricane. Oh, it was rough. I mean, it was, you know, just going like this, 
And the only thing we could do would be to get our bunks and hold our hands like this, keep them falling out. Now, now, when I went down to Bermuda, we were, I was on a tanker, and we were being escorted by destroyers all the way down. There was a Japanese, um, Chinese, a German submarine following us, but rough, sea was too rough and they couldn't surface to sink the tanker. We were in a convoy. So, that was your first at sea experience. At sea was aboard the tanker. Yeah. The Winooski, 800 foot tanker. With the Shea, were you a plank owner or the. A what? A plank owner. The, um, did you put the Shea in commission? No, 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 no. You the, joined it? No, the Shea. Yeah, the Shea was uh, hit off Okinawa and then was brought back to the. Bath, Maine to be repaired, and then I took the place of the pharmacist's mate that was injured or killed. Okay, after yeah, Bath, Maine. He was at Bath, Maine, yeah, down from, uh, they went down to Norfolk, and that's where I went aboard. When you first boarded the ship, what was your rating and rate? Pharmacist's mate third. How did you learn about the uh, shipboard routine? Um, well, I already had a little bit of experience from the Shea, I mean from the Upshore. Okay. So, I knew, you know, the bunking and the mess and all that, all those procedures. Um, did you advance to a higher rate? No, we couldn't because when I was down in Bermuda, they uh, froze all the rates because there were too many... Uh, Pharmacists. You know, first and first class and chiefs. So I took the test, I passed it, took another one and passed it, but we, we still stayed at the same. I was a promise mate third class. What, what shipboard equipment did you operate? Uh, no equipment of the pharmacy mate, you know, took care of the injured. I, what I did is I mixed up medications and took care of wounded, did some suturing. It's mainly just medical. Watches. Uh, what watch sections and watches did you routinely stand? Uh, well, we were on duty 24 hours a day, but we really didn't stand watches. On my bunk there was a loudspeaker right above it, and if they needed us they'd just yell and we'd... So we were on duty 24 hours a day. Well, that skips a lot of sections. Yeah, and when it comes yeah. to loading, the, loading and unloading, the, of course the crew did the loading and we would just sit there and make sure that nobody got hurt. Did you do the same basic duties during general quarters or did you do uh, these change? General quarters we had a go to the galley and that was our, our station. How f when uh, when the sh uh, Shea was going to see about how, uh, how frequently uh, would you go to general quarters? Uh, well, I only went about three or four times and it was just practice because, see, the, we were on the way down and we stopped at Calibra Island, Virgin Islands, and did some shelling. So we called General Quarters in and a couple other times. Okay. Okay, so you performed general quarters drills about three or four times yeah, on the way yeah, down. Okay. About yeah. how long would it take you to man general quarters? Oh, it didn't take very long at all. They were really experienced. See, most of the crew on there were the old crew. Okay. So. And they had served on the old oh, yeah. oh, yeah, they had, uh, if you look at that brochure, why, and that booklet, I'll show you. They had many, many, sometimes three or four times a day. What special sea details were you involved with? Uh, like pulling into port or, or refueling or mm, on replen replenishments? No, just we went. I 
I don't understand. I mean, well, like when you pulled in the port, yeah. d did you have a a, fun, a, a duty like ten line ten? Oh, or? oh yeah, I see what you mean now. No, no, my do job was not a very glamorous one. <laughs> when the guys would leave, I was there to give them a condom. Oh. <laughs> when they came back, and when they came back, we had to... Now, we, now you're immortalized forever on film. Right, well, you want to know what I did. That's what I did. And uh, then we would have to ask if they had been with any of the girls, and if they had, we examined them. And, yeah. That's, that's what a pharmacist mate does. <clears throat> uh, did you ever ride on a boat? This is completely... <laughs> Did you ever ride on a bosun's chair during a ship-to-ship -ship transfer? Uh, not ship-to-ship, -ship, but ship-to-shore. Well, I mean, on a bosun's chair, though. Where oh, I feel, I know what you mean, yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. No, no. Yeah. Never. Okay. Never. Okay. Uh, um, well, on uh, the uh, Shea, who, who was your commanding officer? Uh, Kick pa kill, kick pa kill Patrick. Um, what leadership style did he use? To run? He was very good. He was very fair, and very um, honest. He was very easy. He, he never really pressured you or, or anything. Was he by the book? Yeah, he's by the book, but very fair. Very personal. Yeah, he was personal with everybody. He knew everybody on board. Did you have any uh, first-hand experiences in author, officer's country? No, not really. Your duties didn't involve any uh, contact around the ward room? Or, no, no, uh, no. We you, had a doctor on board, and of course he... You had a doctor? Yeah, he was my uh, superior. And there was another pharmacist mate. Okay. There were three of us. Um, were you ever involved with a captain's mass? What were your uh, overall impressions of the quality of the other officers? Oh, they were all ex. We just like a big family. And uh, your your the officer that you reported to was the the uh, medical officer. Yeah, Doctor Markson. Okay. What about the XO? The what? The executive officer. He's very good. I can't remember his name right now. Did you observe a contrast between the uh, the COs? Uh, Leadership style and the XO's leadership style. No, they were pretty much on the pretty same. Pretty much the same, yeah. Uh, what about the chiefs or leading petty officers? They were all very, very good too. See, we were, we were our group was the pharmacist mates, the uh, yeoman, and the mess, and we had our own little uh, department. What would you call it? So we didn't have much to do with the gunnery people like that. I knew them and all, but didn't have anything to do with them. Did you? Ha there must have been a, a chief uh, yeoman or chief pharmacist mate for your division. No, there wasn't. Just, just the doctor. Okay. And the other pharmacist mate was a third, uh, first class. And I was okay. Third class. So he was the leading petty officer. Yeah, yeah. There were petty officers on board, but I knew them, but I didn't really have any anything to do under them. Okay. Did you have any uh, leadership responsibilities? No. Did you ever have any discipline problems uh, with any shipmates or anything? No, except when the guys wanted to get out of duty, like loading, they'd come to sick bay and everyone got sick all of a sudden. Mm. Game of pill, right? <laughs> Game of pill, PA, PA, uh, what is it? <laughs> Okay, this is going to be a, if you want to take a break, we Oh, can, that's okay. Okay. No, no. Um, you partially answered it, but we, we can go into more sure. depth. Do uh, you have any comment on storms or rough rough weather? Yeah, a lot of rough weather going out of Cape Hatteras when you're heading down, down uh, south. And um, as I say, the, when we went down to Bermuda on the tanker, it was a very rough weather, and the, sea, the uh, seas would come in, it must have been 20, 30 feet tall, come right down, cover the whole of the tanker, and it would just plow right through it. And then, as I say, on the Shea, why, it was so rough for about two days that we couldn't even get out of bed to get anything to eat, get out of our bunks, we just stayed in them. 
You, you notice the difference between how the tanker would roll. Oh, you ain't the, kidding. The Shea would roll. The destroyer, was, you know. Right. And the tank would just plowed right through it. It would shut up when it hit the waves hit it, but it was like standing on land. On the Shea, everyday activities like eating and sleeping were difficult. No hot meals or anything, right? That, during those two days, yeah. 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 We had bologna sandwiches and stuff when we could get down there. Okay. Uh, Don, you mentioned to me earlier that, that when you were on the Shea, you didn't participate in convoy duty, but you were involved with a convoy duty uh, when you were on the tanker. Right. Right. Um, you want to describe your experiences a little bit with the convoy? Uh, well, it was funny because, you know, I went to sleep. We were on board the tanker at night, and they took off at dawn or before dawn to go into the convoy. And I woke up in the morning, and all of us were the water. It was really funny, funny feeling. Um, but after, oh, maybe half a day, we started getting the bad weather. I was on the way, way to Bermuda, and uh, the ships, you know, the whole convoy was just uh, zigzagging. Zigzagging, I couldn't think of the word. They were just zigzagging, and uh, the sea got rougher and rougher, and then about, oh, three-quarters of the way down there, the captain on the tanker announced that a German sub had been following us, but the sea was too rough for it to, to uh, do any damage. So we got down to Bermuda, beautiful weather, and that was, that was the trip. But we zigzagged all the way down. Must have been glad for the rough <laughs> for the weather. Say we were, we really were. Cause on a little tanker that's loaded, you know, right. boy, and that's would have made some, quite a spot. You have a big old bullseye on yeah, the side sure, of it. Sure, yeah. You mentioned when you were in Bermuda, you had occasion to uh, be there when the U-505 happened to uh, pull uh, pull in. Can you uh, describe those experiences? Well, the um, they came in, and they, they, what happened was the... 505 had come to the surface. This was off uh, Africa. Guadalcanal converted carrier was the one that captured them. And uh, they were going to abandon ship. I think they'd, o yeah, they'd opened the uh, cock so that the ship would s the sub would sink. But they got up on the conning tower and they were getting ready to uh, abandon ship when the uh, uh, shell, one of the destroyers started shelling them. And one of the shells went through the conning tower where the captain was standing, and he got wounded in the knee. So he was brought into the uh, dispensary where I was working, and um, the crew was brought in. The crew was very bellig belligerent. Oh, they were they'd swear at us and everything, but they were in the um, listed men's side of the thing. I was working the sick officers' quarters, and. Uh, they brought the captain in, and he was very nice. He was, he was a, um, um, he lived in, in the United States, and uh, he was on board a tanker, and he, uh, with his wife, and they went to Germany. He, ship was confiscated, and he was put as a first mate on a, on a, I think it was a sub, I'm not sure. But anyway, he, uh, they kept his wife there like a hostage, and eventually he was, given the command of the uh, 505, and they went out into the uh, Atlantic, and he was out there. I don't know whether he sunk any ships or not, but uh, um, he was, uh, as I say, they captured him, brought him in, and all the time he was there, he was worried about his wife, because she was either, I can't remember it was Hamburg or, or Frankfurt, and the Allies were bombing the daylights out of it then. So, he spoke perfect English, was a very nice guy. Uh, I had no hard feelings to because I never did towards anyone. Because he, to me, he was just a patient. He was somebody that was hurt. And he eventually uh, developed gangrene in his knee. They, we had to, they had cuts in his knees and drains in them. And we had to flush it with, uh, I can't remember what the stuff was, but it was a yellow solution oh, four or five times a day. But it didn't do any good. Eventually they had to remove his leg. And he was there for oh, probably another two months, and then he shipped. Never heard where he went after that. 
Who, what was his name? Harold Lang, L-A-N-G-E. You also mentioned you were involved uh, on the Shea with mine laying operations off of Cuba. Yeah, yeah, we were in, in off of uh, Cuba when the war ended, so we immediately got word to stay there, and the uh, U.S. Navy loaned or loaned or gave two minesweepers to the Chinese Navy so that they could uh, clear the, clear the minefields off the coast of China. So what we did is we had some mines on on the track, the mine tracks ran down the side of the thing, the ship, and they went off the fantail, and we uh, would lay those mines two or three, four a day, and then uh, go off, and the Chinese didn't know where they were. They had an idea where they were, I guess. But anyway, they would sweep them, and then when the mines came up, we would shoot them, you know, they'd blast them with the guns to destroy them. And uh, we were down there for quite a while, and uh, we just kept coast up and down the, C the Cuban coast for so several weeks. This was after the war, right? Yeah, after the war. Yeah. And then we went down to uh, Puerto Rico, and then down to we were coming back, coming back up close to Key West, and I. Well, it's a long story, but what had happened was, working on TB Wad in Portsmouth, I had developed TB, and it had, uh, when I had gone, just before I gone on the Shea, they had taken an x-ray, and it showed that oh, I was positive for TB, but it never caught up with me, so the report never caught up. So when I was on the ship down in the Shea, we were off shortly below Key West. A uh, uh, report caught up. The captain called me into the office and uh, told me that I had to go to the hospital. So I left the ship then and went over to the Key West to the hospital, Naval Hospital there. Okay. Shift gears now. Yeah. If you want to take a break. No, that's okay. okay. That's okay. Uh, what about meals on ship? They were good. Every one of them. Shea. And the up, and the um, upshore, and good cooks everywhere. Bermuda, they were excellent too. What about the usage of water? Did you have an unlimited supply? No, no yeah, unlimited. Everything. Really? Yep. Mm -hmm. Well, see, the Shea was in. I mean, the upshore was in port. Okay. At at Norfolk, so they we had no problem. Bermuda, the Navy, they covered the whole hills with uh, cement, and the waters collected into cisterns. Cisterns, yeah. yeah. But on the oh, Shea? The Shea, no, we never had any trouble. Oh. Yeah. You have any uh, humorous stories involving shipboard life? No, not really. It was just a routine. We had a lot of friends and we just played cards. And Were uh, any junior sailors ever sent on snipe hunts or wild goose chases? No, none of that. <laughs> none of that? <laughs> none of okay. that. No left handed monkey wrenches or. Yeah. Yeah. What Navy were you in? <laughs> in the U.S. Navy, not the one you were in. That, that for the record, that's a little uh, little uh, comment from a, a observer. <laughs> An ex-Navy man. Too. Another ex-Navy man. Um, when you weren't standing uh, working or standing watch, what pastimes were available? Oh, we could play cards. We had movies up on the uh, bow, and... Um, Where did you show the movies, on the mess deck? Or? No, no, up on the bow, in front of the front, uh, the five-inch guns. The screen would be up on the bow, and we'd be sitting in front of the guns, under the guns. And then um, we spent a lot of time just sitting and talking. we sit on the mine tracks, and uh, don't watch, like at night it was beautiful to watch the moon coming up. What about holidays at sea? Christmas, Thanksgiving? Uh, well, they had, you know, beautiful meals. Like Christmas, had beautiful meals, Thanksgiving. Um, most of the time we were at sea, and as I say, we got a week in, I mean, a day in, 
um, Puerto Rico, and then Cuba, we were there for one day, uh, Guantanamo, stopped there for one day. But outside of that, well, we went down to Calibra, the Virgin Islands, and did some shelling of practice down there. The uh, artillery range was in the Virgin Islands? It was a Cali Calibra. That was the name of the mm -hmm. island, and we, and we shelled it. Uh, what, when you visited Port, what type of liberty were you given? Um, I was on, let's see, three off and one on, I think it was, something like that. Did you get Cinderella liberty, you have to come back at a certain time? or? or uh... Uh, yeah, usually well, like it was a day, like in uh, Puerto Rico, we had to be back at a certain time because the ship was going to be leaving. and. Uh, um, that was on board ship. Of course, being on land, it was different with Bermuda. Uh, but the, um, yeah, we usually had to be back at a certain time on board ship. How did you stay in touch with your family? Uh, writing. They it was uh, mail frequent? Yeah, my mother wrote quite often. Were you able to, was there any delays in getting the mail out? Or anything? Not that I know of, no. Yeah. How did you feel when you were finally discharged? Well, it uh, from Key West when I, you know, I developed the TB. I went in the hospital at Key West, and then they flew me up to New York. It's where the Finger, Finger Lakes are, Rochester or some place like that, a naval station. And I was there for seven months because of the TB. Then I was discharged from there, but at that time, why most of the peak guys were already home because the war had been over for quite a while. Was that forty-seven or uh, forty? Late forty-six. Late forty-six. Yeah. How do how, how do you look back on your destroyer experiences? Oh, I love it. I wouldn't trade it for anything. The whole the whole experience. I mean, at the time, you know, it was worrying because I was in Bermuda and they were sinking the ships right off the off Bermuda when the convoys and all that. The time I was down there, Hitler had this Bermuda on the schedule to be occupied. We knew that, but I wouldn't trade it for anything. I don't think, I think most of the fellows in the war feel the same way. Oh, they do? Yeah. The, the ones we've talked to. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, thanks for sharing the experiences with future generations. Um, is there any other comments you want to add? Nope. Okay.